right. Are we ready to go? Is this on? Are we ready? Testing, testing. Are you ready? Which, uh, am, am I on this mic and this mic? Okay. Good morning, good morning, welcome. Welcome to CCA's 2014 Global Expo here in San Antonio. I uh, hope you enjoyed your breakfast this morning. I know that there's still some people over there getting something to eat. Uh, we'll just uh, keep, uh, keep the, the food out and uh, hopefully you'll we'll have uh, plenty of coffee. So. I uh, want to thank our sponsors for the, for the breakfast this morning. NSN, Nokia Solutions Network, sponsor our breakfast. And I'd also like to thank our pinnacle sponsors for this year's expo in an alphabetical order, Alcatel-Lucent, Ericsson, Huawei, Interrupt Technologies, Cineverse, and TNS. We truly appreciate your support and we certainly appreciate your sponsorship. We also welcome those that are joining us by webcast this morning which is provided by our broadcast partner, RCR Wireless. And thank you to Sprint for sponsoring the live streaming for this session. I'm happy to see that uh, so many of you are here joining us this morning. In fact, we have more carriers attending this year's event than ever before. The sheer number of your attendance at today's event is a clear indication that CCA means something to you. Whether you value the policy work, the networking opportunities, the educational sessions, or one of the many other benefits the association provides, we have been able to accomplish a lot together. And it attests to our shared goal and, and quite frankly, our shared vision. And I thank you for your support and your dedication to CCA's mission. Today, our message is being heard by carriers all over the United States and even internationally. I know, for example, today we're joined by China Unicom for the first time. CCA's focus has always been and will remain on wireless carriers. And our priority is advocacy, fighting the legislative and the regulatory battles on behalf of the competitive carriers. But that's not all we do. With the direction of our carriers and our board, we have helped you build important business relationships to find business solutions that we can keep all of us competitive. Our collaborative work on both the advocacy and the business side is uh, particularly important. One of the traits that distinguishes us from many other organizations, in my opinion, is this active, cooperative involvement of our members. By working together, our voices are louder, and uh, I think we can help find solutions that will benefit the entire ecosystem of the competitive carrier. We are bound by common interests, and the better each of us can compete with the duopoly, the better it is for all of us. To keep the organization strong and help us attain these common goals, uh, there are a number of ways that you can get involved and actively support your future in this market. Attending the show today is clearly uh, one such way and uh, great to see so many of you here. But for example, well, there's other ways. Uh, one, uh, join our committees. If you're a member of CCA, that's an automatic invitation to join any of our committees. Get involved. Come to the CCA booth, learn more about the committee opportunities and the other services uh, and opportunities that the association provides. You know, it's sort of like being a member of a gym. You know, the more you show up, the more it helps, uh, the more benefit you get out of it. So uh, I encourage you to, to make uh, maximum use of the value. Another important way to get involved is join our advocacy d discussions and attend Capitol Hill Day. We have enhanced your Washington presence. We have enhanced your voice in Washington, D.C. And Capitol Hill Day is the perfect opportunity to get in front of your member of Congress, look them in the eye, and talk, them, talk to them about your concerns. We invite all of you, carrier, associate, affiliate members, join us next, uh, next June 18th on Capitol Hill Day. Uh, join us, come to the show, uh, come to the... Um, Come to the advocacy event that we have in Washington, D.C. Um, you can go to our website, you can sign up, you can be part of CCA's advocacy team in Washington, D.C. I would also like to remind you that <clears throat> this is an election year, and please remember to ask about CCA's political action committee. Uh, join the discussion. We share 
um, uh, support for those members who support competitive policies, and we would like to ensure that we elect carriers, uh, elect uh, members of Congress that support uh, our competitive carrier policies in the next Congress. So please come and join us. Now, speaking of Washington, uh, the last several months have been quite eventful, and CCA, I think, has accomplished a lot on your behalf. <clears throat> there are a lot of challenges on the horizon, but we can all be pleased with a number of areas of real success. Uh, for one, the restoration of interoperability in the lower 700 megahertz band uh, was a huge su success, and we reported on that at our last show. And I'm pleased to report that the industry has begun implementing the commitments under the FCC order, and we will continue to monitor that and make interoperability a reality. On the legislative side, CC has continued to support your ability to unlock devices. We fought to reverse the Library of Congress's misinformed decision, and just recently the House of Representatives passed an unlocking bill, and we, although we have more work to do in the Senate, it was a great start. We made it clear how important it was for consumers to be able to unlock their devices and have choices of carriers, and your voice was, in fact, heard. Another legislative victory is patent litigation. We brought the issue to, of the patent trolls to the attention of Congress and to the White House. So many of you carriers and vendors alike told us that this was a high priority, and we listened. We understand that dealing with costly, frivolous patent troll lawsuits is, is not what you're in business to do, and we will continue to fight so you can focus on deploying services instead of fighting frivolous lawsuits. And on the immediate horizon, we have the 600 megahertz incentive auction. The H block auction just ended, and the FCC is now working on auction rules for AWS 3. All of these auctions are designed to generate revenue for the government, revenue for FirstNet, and CCA is working diligently to ensure that all carriers, both large and small, have a meaningful opportunity to bid and win at the auctions. The upcoming AWS and incentive auctions are two of our highest priority issues. We want to make sure that every competitive carrier has this opportunity to access spectrum, and the most which is the most fundable, fundamental requirement of a wireless carrier. And any decision to provide anything less than smaller geographic areas is an anti-competitive decision. So we're hopeful that we're going to make progress, not only the AWS 3, but also the 600 megahertz. Um, this is a very important aspect of the incentive auction, geographic license size. Under the previous chairman, the FCC proposed EAs, or economic areas, which are huge, as you know, 176 in the United States. If used, this would essentially eliminate small carriers' opportunities to bid on and actually win spectrum. So the FCCA has urged the FCC to use CMAs. That's been our historical position. It's also allowed small carriers and rural operators to provide service. But based on our understanding that the commission, the previous chairman, <clears throat> was planning to default to EAs for the incentive auction, CCA crafted a compromise, a partial economic areas, PEAs, uh, as the next best option. We've led the effort to accommodate CCA members' needs, and we continue to work with other industry players on the PEA concept, and hopeful that the commission will, in fact, uh, see the broad support that we've generated for PEAs and move forward with decisions with the right geographic size. Uh, I hope we will win the argument on the license size, but even if we do, there's, there are other issues that we have to focus on, such as eligibility rules. Uh, in addition uh, to the incentive auction, there are many other competitive policies that r require our attention, and, and we will continue our efforts to enhance wireless access to the Universal Service Fund i.e. mobility fund, CAF, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> Additionally, we are closely following the progress on IP transition, and there are many other issues uh, out there, of course. And it's not always possible, and, and I don't think probably advisable, to depend on a regulatory solution. And that's why we have been looking uh, at innovative and collective approaches to create um, a competitive wireless ecosystem. We have been uh, building business relationships that can allow you, the small carriers, to continue to compete and thrive. Our industry development program is designed specifically to find solutions for our smaller carriers, to create innovative approaches to the regulatory and business challenges. Carriers need access to critical elements, access to spectrum, roaming relationships, 
that give you a nationwide and, and, and also an international footprint. <clears throat> and state-of-art state of devices at fair, reasonable prices. With these critical elements, I'm convinced you can compete with anyone. And when small carriers compete, it's good for carriers, but it's also good for everyone else, especially consumers. Every carrier in, us, in our association is united by this sort of common challenge to compete with the duopoly. And now, speaking of duopolies, um, I'd like to uh, uh, introduce our first speaker that I think uh, uh, feels as strongly about that as we do, and uh, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, please allow me to introduce our first speaker, uh, Masa Yoshisan.